Hello lovely people, how are you today? Excuse my appearance, I look like a tramp. It's been a while, is that my fault? Yes. Do I care? Not really, to be perfectly honest. This is my July book reviews video. I read a lot of books in July, I can't remember the exact number, but I know it was over 10. So, that's pretty good. I was away for the entire month, I was in England, so I was on holiday, so therefore I read a lot, and it was a good month. I read the best book that I read so far this year, and I read the worst book ever written in the history of humanity. It... We'll wait for that one. We'll wait for that one. I don't physically have all of the books that I read this month because I bought a lot of books in England, therefore some of them are still there. They will be here eventually, but yeah, I have some books physically. I had I read a lot of ebooks as well, and you know, obviously the other ones are not present, which I'll just put a picture of. The first book that I read in July, I started in June and of course finished at the beginning of July, was The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens. This is obviously part of the year of Dickens. This is my fourth Dickens novel. I do realise that I'm not going to finish his bibliography by the time the year ends because it's almost September and I've only read four. So... His books are big, guys. Shut your fucking mouths. This is one of his more popular ones and I was so happy to see that it was only 700 pages because that's a small Dickens novel. It tells a story, you probably know it, of little Nell and her grandfather. They go on the run because there is an angry demon dwarf, like, chasing after them. That's literally the storyline. I'm not even joking. I quite enjoyed this as a Dickens novel. It's not his best. It's not the Pickwick Papers, which I still hold as, like, the, the watermark of the best Dickens novels. This is... Better than Nicholas Nickleby. I really didn't enjoy Nicholas Nickleby, but I think it's on the same level as Oliver Twist, so there we go. The next book I read in July was A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. I haven't read any Joyce. Let that sink in. This was fucking amazing, guys. This is... oh my god. I'm gonna read all the Joyce ever now, he says before attempting Finnegan's Wake. Not gonna try that one, I promise you. This novel, like, it's it's about Stephen Dedalus and growing up through his teenage years, and it made me think. It's well known that I'm not a massive fan of the young adult genre. This is technically a young adult novel. If you were to put it in today's standards, this would be classed as young adult. This is, like, tenfold better than any young adult novel I've ever read, and it makes me really sad to think that 100 years ago when this was written, that this was the watermark for young adult. And now we have Anna and the French Kiss, which I'll get to later, which is the fucking worst novel ever written. This is fucking amazing. This is genuinely brilliant. Oh my God, Joyce is my new bae. No, I'm just joking, he's not my new bae. Dickens is still my bae. This month was a different reading month for me in so much as the fact that I read YA books. This was not of my own, like, choice. But a certain Miss Ariel Bassett was like, Barry, why isn't the devil? And I was like, it kind of is. And she was like, no, here are examples. And she got me to read this novel, Everybody Sees the Ants by A.S. King. Read it on my Kindle. Um, it wasn't awful. In fact, it was, it was quite good. Um, I'm viewing this as kind of an outlier within the young adult genre. Um, it was really interesting. I liked, I, if you've read this, it's about like a guy who like, he's kind of bullied and then he goes to live with his relations and they're crazy. But like when he sleeps, he meets his, I think it's his grandfather, is it? I think it was a while ago. And he goes to the Vietnam War in his dreams and it's really weird. And you see, like, I, like, I, I enjoyed, like, the historical aspect of it. I enjoyed quite a lot of it, actually. I, like, I gave it three stars, which is my usual rating for books. So it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't a masterpiece. Clearly not. But it's, it's good. It's good. Barry liked a YA novel. This is very rare. Document this moment. The next book that I read was A Body Read, once again with Ariel Bassett. Keep the Aspidistra Flying by George Orwell. George Orwell was one of the greatest political thinkers of the 20th century, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, Animal Farm is a masterpiece. 1984 is really quite good. Like, his essays, everything. He, he never did anything wrong. Well, his views on women were a bit... 
dated, but let's forget about that. Keith the Expeditor Flying is a man named, about a man named Gordon, who hates money. He really doesn't like money. He works in a bookshop, and I swear to God, this novel has one of the greatest opening chapters I've ever read in my life. It's just brilliant. It's literally, you can totally tell that Gordon is Orwell. It's so, like, self-autobiographical, it's ridiculous. But it's basically Orwell, I'm gonna call him Orwell from now on, going around the bookshop in which he works, and just being like Robert Louis Stevenson. He was shit, wasn't he? The Foresight Saga, shit. It was just him throwing shade at all these classical authors, and it was the best thing ever. So, the main guy hates money. He says, I don't need money. I'm gonna live, like, I'm gonna subsist for the rest of my life. I just need to li live on the substance level, and that's it. And obviously it doesn't work out very well because that's fucking impossible. You cannot live outside of the economic system. It's like, no, you can't do that. It's impossible. And I'm definitely saying that this is my, like, favourite Orwell novel now. I mean, it's not as good as Animal Farm. Animal Farm is still the high watermark. But this is my new favourite because it's absolutely amazing. And Ariel and I, like, we completely, like, analytically devoured this novel. It was amazing. It was amazing. The next novel I don't have with me because it was too big. Like, I brought it over to England with me, but I didn't bring it back. But it's gonna come. And it's... I can safely say that it is the best novel I've read so far this year. It's my only five-star rating in 2014 so far. It's Moby Fucking Dick. By Herman Melville. Oh my sweet motherfuck. <sighs> Moby Dick is fucking amazing. It's one of the greatest novels ever written, and I can safely say that it is a masterpiece of epic proportions that, it, like, every single word of it is so beautifully crafted, and every sentence of every paragraph of every page of every chapter is just so beautifully done. You can feel like Melville just, like, took this block and he sculpted this masterpiece, and it is by far like, one of the greatest novels of the English language. Like, I can say that without doubt. It is truly beautiful and amazing. And if you don't, if you're scared of reading Moby Dick, don't. Because it is just amazing. People are hesitant about the many chapters of, like, whale anatomy and of discussions of whales in history and whales in art and whales in literature. But honestly, those were the best parts. They were, like, um, like, genuinely amazing. Genuinely amazing. I can't get over Moby Dick. It is so good. It is so brilliant. It is so amazing. Moby Dick. Fucking read it. It's the best. The next book I also don't have on me, but I body read this with Ariel as well. What are the chances? Lots of fun. It was The Complete Mouse by Arch Spiegelman. Um, which you probably all know about. It's a graphic novel series of, made up of two books of Art Spiegelman's father, his, you know, his time before um, the Holocaust and his time during the Holocaust when he was put to a uh, concentration camp. And I liked it. I thought it was really well done. It was really well constructed. I thought it was, the story was, you know, it was obviously non-fiction, but it was really well crafted and well done. However, I do feel like the whole, oh look, Jews are mice, Nazis are cats. Like, he could have taken that metaphor so far, and he just didn't. Like, halfway, like, halfway through, when I finished book one, I was kind of like, there is literally no point of any of these characters just not being human. The anthropomorphism was just pointless, and... I don't know, it, I feel like it would have had the exact same effect on me, and it would be in the exact same novel if it had just been humans, and that is kind of an interesting look, but yeah, it, it's still good, you should t t definitely read it, because it's Mouse and it's like, it won the Pulitzer, but it's really worth it and it's really good. The next book I don't have on me, but it was probably the most disappointing book of the month. It was Viette by Charlotte Bronte. I love the Bronte sisters. I think they're one of, they are probably the greatest writers of the 19th century, Bar Dickens. And I'm like, I'm gonna finish their work soon, but uh, Viet just, it's not Jane Eyre. People say, oh yeah, Viet is so much better than Jane Eyre. It's not. It's 
so totally not at all in any way. It doesn't even come close to Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is a literary masterpiece, one of the greatest novels ever written. Viet isn't. I mean, yeah, it's about governess and, you know, every fucking... For some, yeah, every fucking Bronte novel, like, surrounds a fucking governess and it's kind of ridiculous, but, yeah. I don't know, Viet just didn't, like, interest me at all. Like, by the end of it, I almost felt like everything that I was reading was a chore. Like, the twists in it aren't even that twisty. Um, and it's just disappointing because it is a Bronte novel. And I don't want to say that a Bronte novel was disappointing, but it was. I mean, I've read all of Emily now because she only read one. I've read all of Anne, and I've read two of Charlotte, and so far the winner is Anne. Because Anne wrote fucking The Tenant of Wildfell Hall and Agnes Grey, and they are both brilliant. I still have to read Professor and Shirley by Charlotte, but we'll see how they go because they're supposed to be awful. So, we'll see. The next book that I read in the month is by far the worst book I've ever read. Like, worse than Twilight, worse than the fucking Hunger Games, Jesus Christ. Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins is a cancerous novel that must be stopped immediately. It's fucking awful. In the French Kiss, I have no idea why it was written. I have no idea of its literary purpose. It is junk. It is a waste of paper resources. It is a waste of the time I spent reading it. Stephanie Perkins has somehow mastered the art of being a fucking idiot and I don't know why this novel I, I went on to Goodreads it has loads of five star ratings I don't know how that happened either just the entirety of civilization has become so fucking stupid that they believe that this novel has any merit at all but oh it's so bad it's so bad that I can't even conceive of the words in which I could criticize it Anna is by far the stupidest fucking character I've ever come across in the entirety of literature that I've read. She is fucking stupid, she is dense, she is just mind-numbingly inane. I can't even believe that someone could conceive of a character that is so devoid of just moral standings that she can even exist. It's terrible. She is stupid. She goes to Paris, right? And she's this big film buff. Like, oh, she loves films. She thinks film's the most amazing thing ever. First of all, she's a fucking idiot. Second of all, she goes to Paris and she's not aware that there are cinemas in Paris. What are the chances of there being cinemas in Paris? Cinemas in Paris? Cinema itself, film, was invented in France. Like, She's a film buff, and she knows fucking nothing. She is the stew. I can't even deal with her. She's a fucking idiot. And then we have fucking Etienne Sinclair. Etienne Sinclair is just vapid, disgusting. He made me want to vomit my own fucking intestines through my eyeballs. He is just terrible, terrible. The novel was so open-ended to a double suicide, I was hoping that they just fucking knock themselves off. But no. They didn't. It's a fucking terrible novel. And the, the, just the mere just fact that this has two other novels in the fucking series just makes me want to just not read a novel ever again. Just get rid of the fucking publishing industry because they have done nothing in any way to help just young people read. It's terrible. It's terrible. Don't read Anne in the French Kiss. You'll become stupider from reading it. It's terrible. Just fucking After know. the sheer crock of shit that was Anne and the French Kiss, I needed to cleanse. I needed to cleanse my brain and my body of just the sheer awfulness. So I picked up a Thomas Hardy novel. I picked up The Mayor of Casterbridge. This is amazing. The Mayor of Casterbridge is very commonly thought in schools, therefore it kind of has a bad reputation about it as being an awful novel, but everyone is wrong. Listen to me, this is one of Thomas Hardy's best novels, by far. It's by far my favourite of his novels that I've read, and this novel is so full of twists and turns, you feel sick, and it's brilliant. Like, where Viette kind of failed in terms of twists, this excelled to, like, like gold medal level. This was 
genuinely amazing. This is one of the best novels I've read so far this year. And, oh, it's so brilliant. So brilliant. So I'm going to tell you the synopsis. And if you don't want to read it immediately, then there's something fucking wrong with you. Okay, so this guy is, like, married. He married his wife and he has a daughter. And they're walking along the country one day and they come across a fair, right? And the guy gets really, like, fucking drunk as shit, right? And he decides to auction off his wife and his daughters, right, and his daughter, just one. And his wife and his daughter are just like, well, this fella's a fucking prick that we're married to, we're gonna fuck off, yeah, someone buy us, please. And they get fucking auctioned off. Then, Henchard, the main guy, is like, shit, what have I fucking done? I just sold my wife and daughter. He goes to a church and he's like, God, I'm never gonna fucking drink again. And then he's like, okay, I'm never drinking again. Skip 20 years. The daughter and the, the mother are coming back to the village and they're like, yes, we are married to this guy called Henchard, do you know where he is? And they're like, oh yes, he's in Casterbridge. They go to fucking Casterbridge and guess fucking what? He's the motherfucking mayor. It's like, what? It's so brilliant. Thomas Hardy was such an amazing writer and this is so many twists guys it's fucking amazing read the mayor of casterbridge it isn't that big it isn't that big it's fucking amazing the next novel i was expecting so much more from and i didn't get it it's where angels fear to tread by e.m forrester this is my first forrester novel it's his first novel as well because you know that's how i like to read authors this isn't very good. To be well, it, thank goodness it's like it's only about 140 pages in total. So thank goodness it's small because this would not have sustained a 300-page novel. And it was just like it wasn't good. The plot wasn't amazing. The characters weren't memorable. It was just very meh. It wasn't. It wasn't good. But I'm not going to give up on Forrester yet because I've heard like such amazing things about like Howard's End. And Morris, I've heard, like, just the best things ever. So I'm going to continue reading through Forrester. He hasn't read that, like, he hasn't written that many books. So that's good. I may work through his bibliography quite soon. But yes, Not My Cup of Tea was his first novel. No, not at all. During July, the Man Booker Prize long list was released. Usually, I don't really take that much notice of the long list. I wait for the short list. But this year, I was like, yeah, let's read through the long list. That didn't go very well at all because the first book that I read was To Rise Again at a Decent Hour by Joshua Ferris. This is the story of a dentist who gets his identity stolen online. And it's kind of shit. It's kind of really kind of shit. It's like, it's kind of like comical literary fiction, which is so hard to get right. And this didn't get it right at all. Like the first third of the novel can maybe be viewed as even a bit enjoyable, but the rest is just theological bullshit. And it's just awful. Like, if this were made into a film, it would be a Coen Brothers film. But it would be a shit Coen Brothers film. It would be like The Lady Killers or something like that. This is, like, definitely this will not be on the shortlist. I can tell you now because if this is on the shortlist, I'm gonna flip a fucking house. Because this is, this is really shit and don't read it because it's awful and I don't know why it's even on the long list. It's so bad. The last book that I read in July was the second book on the long list and it was The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. This is, it's, it's the second, it's about a Japanese prisoner of war camp from the, obviously in the Second World War, from an Australian point of view, it, like I haven't read that point of view before and Japanese prisoner of war camps were notoriously just brutal and they, they were probably the worst ones. They were, they were probably, they were, Japanese prisoner of war camps were equal to the concentration camps in like Poland um, but you know for non-Jews, for you know just like Americans and British people. Um, brilliantly portrayed in Bridge on the River Kwai, which is one of the greatest films ever made. Now Road to the Deep North. It's alright. It's not amazing. Um, it's not the best war novel. It's not the worst war novel. Oh no way it might be. But no, like th there are some descriptions in this of just the sheer brutality of the Japanese prisoner of war camp. 
read it for them and just don't read the rest of it because the descriptions are so graphic and so brutal. It's like reading a Chuck Palahniuk novel. They are just really just like, oh, my, my senses just can't handle this shit. And oh, it's like, it's really graphic. It, it's, it shows like the horrors of war, but like realistically, and it's really disgusting. But I wouldn't go around recommending this novel because the rest of it is kind of shitty. So yeah, after this, I was like, okay, I don't think the long list is going to suit me. Because I bought, um, We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves, and I was like, okay, I'm going to read this, and I didn't. Because I think, isn't that the same author who wrote the Jane Austen book club? Fucking Jane Austen. Although, I've seen a lot of people be really fucking, this is going to really annoy me, and I'm such a hypocrite. People are being really fucking pissy about David Nichols being longlisted. Yeah, he wrote One Day, which is terrible. One Day is not a good novel. But, he wrote Starter for Ten. Starter for Ten is one of my favourite novels of all time. Yeah, it's like, kind of romantic comedy-ish. But it's really brilliant. It's set around University Challenge. So, why aren't you reading it? Like, oh, I hate it. I've seen people, like, it's really annoying me. People are like, oh yeah, that's the One Day author. I'm not reading that shit. Get out, you fucking bitch. He wrote Star for Ten, which is amazing. Read Star for Ten. If you take anything from this novel, from this novel, I'm obviously making novels now, from this video. Read Moby fucking Dick, read Joyce, and read Star for Ten. That's enough for me for like another couple of months. Okay, see ya, bye. Peace out. I'm sorry I can't do that, I'm not urban enough.